we're going to register the axe attack today. If I look at the axe, this collider is for the pickup. I want a more specific, a smaller collider for the attack. So I'm going to create another one here at the axe renderer. And just the size. So this would be the actual attacking area. Something like that. Also the thickness, make it a little higher. Okay, is trigger is turned on and by default, I'm gonna turn off the box collider. I'm also gonna treat this almost like another body part of the player. If we look at the body parts, the hand, for example, or thigh, shin, whatever, all the body parts have the trigger detector. So same thing with the ax, I'm gonna add the trigger detector. And of course, we would have to make some adjustments in the code. I'm gonna go into the melee weapon. So we have two box colliders. One is the picking up collider, collider for the pickup. And the other one is the attack collider. And we also have the trigger detector. I'm going to go back to Unity. And I'm going to drag in the parts. So here's the pickup collider, the attack collider, and the trigger detector. Apply. And I'm going to go back to the code. In the update, we want to turn on and off the colliders depending on the state of the axe. If we have the character control, the owner, meaning some player is holding the axe, we're not going to use the pickup collider. So if control is not null, pickup collider enabled would be false, attack collider would be true, turned on, and the opposite case if the weapon is dropped. If it's dropped, pickup collider is enabled and the attack collider is not enabled. I'm gonna press Control T, go into the weapon pickup. And when we pick up a weapon, we need character control in the trigger detector. Let's make that public. So we also designate the character control for the trigger detector. In reverse, when we let go of the weapon, when we put down the weapon in the drop weapon function, we do the opposite. The trigger detector control would be null. And to actually register an attack, I'm going to go into the damage detector. This function, we're checking whether we're colliding with an attacking body part or not. We're looking at the attack part type, F12. I'm going to add a type, I'll call it melee weapon. And when we're getting the attacking body part, control T, get attacking part. Okay, we're going to add a few lines here. When we're looking for the melee weapon attacking part, we're going to return the holding weapon. More specifically, the trigger detectors 
game object, which is the same thing that we're doing with all the other body parts. So I'm going to go back to Unity, go to my X folder, X attack folder. We don't have it yet. Let me rename this one. I'm going to create an X standing attack folder. So just like all the other ones, I'm going to go in there and create an attack ability, player attack x standing attack and the attack time i'm going to guess for now start at 30 percent and at 70 percent attacking part is the melee weapon which we just added it must collide max hits i'm going to set it at three so with a single swing we can kill up to three enemies and the only other option we're going to touch is we're going to use the particle effects, the damage white particle effects. I'm going to go to the animator. X attack. Add the attacking ability. And I'm also going to add a white bot blue into the scene. right here and turn off AI for now I'm gonna click play pick up the axe and swing okay we got the attack register but I forgot to add force to the attack so I'll try 3500 on the forward and we're, the axe is swinging, the enemy would be going this way if it's hit. So negative right, means, which means left. Something like 900. Okay. Maybe forward was a little too much. I'll make this, make this 1,000. Okay, maybe 2,000. Okay, I think I like that better. So here it is one more time. Let me also take a look at the other side. Okay, seems to be working fine. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.